I haven't been this excited to celebrate 420 in a long time. Okay, I'm being honest. <laughs> it's been about a decade since I was expectant on 420. Out the gate. So this conversation is going to be a, a good one. I got my dear friend. This uh, It's crazy to think that I've known you greater than a decade. Because uh, even as I think back of how far that journey has been, the fact that all the way from the Black Mamba up on Cleveland in 161, and everything you've seen, like I've, I feel like I've deposited so much in you just from my life journey that you wanted them reference points that I always got to tap in with. You know, you keep me grounded. Taylor Gray, I'm appreciative of you, dog. My G. And you looking fly. You got the J's on. My G, man, like it goes both ways. We The, the deposits have been mutual and uh, the account balances are healthy. So <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good it. to be here. It's good to be here on 420. In a, in a new space, in a new season. In a new space, in a new season. And before you click off and get your comments all loaded up, um, please remember, I'm, I'm TC. We, if you know me, then you know that this conversation, I'm coming to it with uh, a pure heart. I really want to uh, reiterate, man, I love God more now than ever in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as we contextualize this journey that I'm mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. I want that to be the anchor of this conversation. And it's crazy. When, when did we like have this idea for this conversation? We was like, hey, we got to talk about this. You sparked the I'm idea. I'm trying to remember like how long ago. This was probably a couple of years ago. This was probably a couple so of years ago. it's been a grip. Okay. It's been a while. Okay. I just never forgot. Like, you know, you and I, we, we've had opportunities to just like take a moment and consider what's going on in our lives. And in one of those moments, it just came up. And it was like, okay, well, at the time, I felt like I needed to process it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm here, and I'm like, oh, I'm glad to be here. So mm -hmm. thank you for, for sparking that thought. And uh, thank God for orchestrating life in such a way to help mm -hmm. us get here. I have zero disclaimers for for this conversation. <laughs> I mean, you know, people know me as as a pastor, as a as a rapper. Um, you know, as as I, you know, it's hard to be able to to call myself an activist of sorts, but I do care about our social issues, and, and mm -hmm. I try to use my voice in association with that. But you know, all of these elements of our life. Uh, are in play as we talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're not sectioning off parts of who we are. Right. This is a conversation that impacts all areas of our lives. So that's, that's you know, I know there's whatever out there, but I don't even feel like dealing with how people may understand what we're saying. Mm -hmm. All I'm asking is you listen. Yeah, that's 100 you know what? Honestly, as you were articulating that, I'm thinking like what has given me the courage these days mm. to even come out with this conversation? Because 10 years ago or even five years ago, I felt like too much was at stake. So I've had to like really uh, process like. I was in corporate spaces and the idea of showing up your full self mm. As a black man, I had teal hair, I'm wearing teal suits. And my <laughs> ability to, a part of me feels ashamed now, but a part of like my ability to suppress elements of who I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, enabled me to get to certain seats, but yeah. like I, I've been inspired by LinkedIn, dropped a campaign called I Am Professional. Okay. Right? We'll have to play that for the people if you haven't seen it. They're really disrupting, when you say, he looks professional. Mm -hmm. There's a visual that comes to mind, and it doesn't look like this. Yeah, man. But how are you going to say this ain't professional? You know what I'm saying? Just off the strength. It's, oh, man. See, that's a whole nother vein. I know it is. Because I, I was in corporate America at one point. You know, I'm, I'm not the pastor who just went to seminary and, and made theology and, and education like my, my basis for uh, qualification. Mm -hmm. I worked in the corporate yeah. sector so I got the book business professionalism for dummies <laughs> I got that book like sent to me like this is what you need to study this is your bible in order to be presentable so that resonates on another level bro <laughs> so I did that in the corporate space this is my superpower the double edge of my superpower mm. to step into a room and have the emotional intelligence to know what everybody needs to feel safe mm. 
and the ability to deliver that. Yeah. And, you know, so I did that in the corporate space and I did it in the church environment. Yeah. Right. And so fast forward through a long 10 year journey of really going from like taking what other Christian thinkers have said, Mm -hmm. you know, because back then, you know, my transformation was radical. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in church. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a reference point for all the stuff you're telling me not to do. Mm -hmm. But you the one in authority. That's what you say. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was a lot of stuff I immediately put down. You know, you had me watching G. Craig Lewis throwing away <laughs> CDs, bro, that I'm sick. I ain't got no more. But, bro, but listen, it was- <laughs> listen, listen, we can because what we have to do is take time to talk about what conversion is or what we perceive conversion to be. That's fair. And we'll get there. We so so we're here today to talk about. Weed. Thanks for reeling it back in. And it's not weed. Let's call it cannabis. Thank Let's you. Call it cannabis. This is this is why we're here is is to address terminology. Yeah, like yeah. some so, s- some some ways, like you said, you can present something on the front end without fully exploring what it is, just based on what words you use. So I said weed. You said wait a minute. Let's go to cannabis first. Yeah. So why would you why 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 are you dialing it back, man? Why we got to go back to to that term? It ain't. I, I don't know if it's back. I think there's so many stigmas around cannabis, mm. especially in church and societal, like the norm of engaging cannabis. There seems to be a lifestyle associated with it. And certain mm. words yeah. trigger certain, right? So weed right. even compared to marijuana mm-hmm. compared to cannabis, which when you when I stroll up in the botanist with mm-hmm. my medical license to engage, mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. call it cannabis. That's right. And and so I think even too like the origin of some of the words, bro, like in my journey of finding because I had to be honest with God. Is is this something you created? And if so. From what point did you create everything and say it was good to where now it's illegal? Where, where's the gap? Yeah. And, and so to go back and find out even the term marijuana mm-hmm. was brought into play as a propaganda ploy mm. to as as white america saw immigration from mexico mm-hmm. and bro back then late 1800s early 1900s you can go into cvs bro and buy cannabis off the shelf bro so but, i want you to go into that but i just have to pause what what is the botanist what oh, is that's, that that's, that's my dispensary of choice it's a dispensary yeah yeah, yeah. It's a dispensary. Again, I, I just yeah. want to spend... I'm going to put the picture up. Because cause, cause what I want to do is go through the history, but I want to also like just take time to acknowledge that these terms that we're using, what we're saying is going to give people pause. You know, sure. like, so you, you described yeah. a scenario when I roll up <laughs> in the botanist to, to, to legally engage, that phrase right there had a lot of people on pause. Or potentially could. Right. Yeah, so let me, can I go back then? I just want to say, like, the fact that it's crazy to me that we can just say the botanist, and it's another form of terminology to make a transaction sound a little bit more attractive and accessible than I rolled up on the homie and asked for a dime. And I don't know what I got. <laughs> <laughs> but but who is the botanist? This The homie or, or someone at some point is the botanist. Yeah. But they yeah. weren't branded that way. Yeah. So yeah, they go didn't ahead. Have doctors in the back, different you know, doctors. putting labels on it. Bam, it, it was baggies, you know. <laughs> um, Bags, bro. <laughs> man, Ziploc. You know, <laughs> where were we? Where were we? Well, we were uh, talking, the terms. Yeah, you, the terms. I, yeah, I just, yeah. I just want to oh, yeah, feel yeah, that yeah, for yeah. a second. Well, yeah, because I think, oh, but you got to think. It's been illegal for so long yes. that in order for people to communicate it about it, we've created all manner of nicknames, marijuana, yes. ganja, gas, yeah. kush. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so yeah. we've all, especially through hip hop culture, like the ability to still communicate the lifestyle without being caught. That's why there's so many different names. Yeah. But I think, again, certain words trigger different emotions around it because of how I was introduced and the propaganda around it, the narrative around it. So let me just ask you this. Do you feel comfortable talking about it openly now? Right here, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, honestly, I had to I had a long journey with my wife through cannabis because, you know, I used to do cannabis like uh, towards the tail end of high school up 
through about 20. Then I put it down cold turkey. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm. trying to walk this thing of faith out. And really, mm. I put down everything because mm. I really was like, God, I don't really know what nothing is. I don't want no disruptors. Let's go back to square one. What is life? What mm. is man? <laughs> um, and mm. so to then in that environment, marijuana you know, it's demonized in such a way, you know, the spirit, you know, so I, I clearly ran from it, <laughs> but I remember what cannabis did for me. You know, I ain't no, I didn't never forget the impact. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dang, how is this illegal? You know, I ain't even dig into <laughs> it, but bro, I, I, I go off bro. And the, like my marriage Man. getting trill work, getting trill, mm. bro. I remember the support that was available. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I engaged. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, because at this point, I'm full of the Holy Ghost, bro. Like, so yeah. we got to talk about this guy because this is impacting me in a positive way. And so it's time for me to get in your face. Not yeah. what anybody else has said to me, because yeah. I got to get back to where did mm -hmm. I find out that this was wrong? Yeah. And if it's at the mouth of somebody else, let's keep digging. What let's you got digging. to say about it? Yes. That's, mm -hmm. So that's where that question came from. Mm -hmm. Did you create this, God? Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, I believe he created everything. You know, mm -hmm. other people have their beliefs around how stuff got here. I like intentional, mm -hmm. especially when you really start digging into the properties and the medicinal. Pro but we didn't even go go there yet, bro. Yes, but yes, if God created it, and it's illegal now, Schedule One cats doing life mm. for this. Where was the gap? Where was what, the what gap? happened? When did this become illegal? I love it. I love yeah. I love your questions because they, these are the questions, in my opinion, to to be to begin the journey of better understanding. You yeah. know, like and in, in cards on the table. I'm I'm so comfortable having this conversation now myself mm -hmm. because um, you have had a number of different ways to visit with the idea similar to you, personal testimony, but even my relationships. You know, like just the way and the range of relationships that I've encountered over the years, um, I've heard some of these same things in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, and I now I feel like I have to eat crow or I have to double back and say, "Hey, my bad." You know, like I was in a different space. Mm -hmm. We're here today, mm -hmm. and what you just said, like the the in the beginning uh, kind of way of processing this. Um, what what have you found in terms of? In this exploration, what was happening in history, that, like particularly in this country, how were people treating cannabis, you know, maybe 100 years ago? What Bro, was going on? So that's 1920s. Um, to, again, I, I mentioned late 1800s, early 1900s, right? You know, mm -hmm. you know where the state of America was, mm -hmm. right? Blacks have been emancipated, but yet still not free. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Systems are in place that still disenfranchise, create separation, right? Mm -hmm. And so, again, cannabis mm -hmm. was on the U.S. Uh, pharmacopoeia, I believe is how it's pronounced. Like, okay. where they, like, all the medicines are documented. It's how you use it. There's the properties, et cetera. Or you can go into stores and buy it for regular, like, let me get some cigarettes, some wow. chapstick, and this little oil, let, like, but it's modest when wow. you consume it in that way, right? There's no smell, There's right? No There's smell. a whole different lifestyle with yeah. that type of consumption. Yeah. But with migration in the early 1900s, again, the, the I forget the gentleman's name. I think his last name is uh, uh, Harry Auslinger, bro. He okay. was the first... Uh, uh, I have to get the. I'm gonna make sure we get it in the in the tape. That's but cool. No, no. He so get his name out there. Though. One of the first individuals to. Pot, like really use that term marijuana because mm. it created a tie between the Mexicans who are now coming up here and smoking it. Don't you guys hate that smell? Mm. Let's call it marijuana. And you know, they put the, they emphasize the Spanish twang mm. on marijuana so that again, from a public standpoint, that smell y'all hate, that mm. lifestyle that coming with that, all that, you know. So it felt foreign to American culture. Right. Okay, from, from, or, so or majority we, American culture. But mm -hmm. this is still a people we want to put our hands on. Mm -hmm. We want to put our thumb on. Mm -hmm. But you know, the message they blow, bro. They up here still, bro. Mm -hmm. And guess who they flocking with? The other marginalized people who have been brought here. Mm -hmm. Black people, yeah. dog. And they like, yo, you need this. 
And black people are like, yes, <laughs> we do. We we need this. Bro. And, and and bro, so so running parallel, right? This is early 1900s, bro. Um, the there's a marijuana tax act that comes out, I think, in 37 mm -hmm. that really start people had to pay heavy fines when they were found with it. Mm. And again, because of what I know now, you know, vaporizing marijuana or edibles, it's so discreet. Mm. I'm sure the elite people who was buying cannabis off the shelf back then still had their way that was undetected. But since this, you can't control the smell as well. You can clearly see the eyes all. We can call it this and send all the, the attention here. But now it's black and brown people who just trying to relieve their stress with a God given, God created entity. Man. And, and so the tax act happens, bro. And then in the early 40s, it's removed from the U.S. Uh, pharmacopoeia, mm -hmm. right? Through the 50s, there's more taxations and fees placed on it all the way up until it's placed as a Schedule One drug in the 70s, bro. With wow. cocaine, bro. It went wow. from on the shelf at CVS next to the gummy bears <sighs> to See, man. cats is doing life sentences for having it. Cocaine. All, all the while, big, big, big pharma is figuring out how can we monetize this? It's being sold. It's being, mm -hmm. but we can't put our tax on it, so therefore we can't legalize it. But once the systems became in place, you're watching a lot of these individuals that have demonized it, that have said this is an atrocity for America. So much propaganda during that time, too. Movies that was portraying marijuana as this like gateway drug, and when people are on it, they raping people and all this. Like it's a lot of that, but but now we can put business around it. There's ways to track it, ways to tax it open the botanist. But the them people that we locked up from the 70s, 80s, still 90s, there. they still locked up still for possession. There. Yep. But so I'm just saying like it's for me it was a the journey was just getting the truth for myself to where I could be honest before God. And that's and that's the key right there, getting the truth for yourself because you know, if, depending on the audience that that's engaging with this right now, you know, you can enter into a mind state where you say, yeah, I'm going to check out here because these guys are just trying to justify something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And the the problem with that is, is you, you may not be uh, honest in like a, the introspective journey you have to take is to say, like, have I looked into this myself? Have I have I become educated? Have I researched the history? Have I researched the science? You know, do I really understand how this has impacted society in a way where my perception has literally been manipulated mm -hmm. around this conversation? Because that's what happens when you start talking about propaganda. Mm -hmm. Propaganda means that your perception, your understanding of society and the world around you has been manipulated mm -hmm. by people who are able to present messaging and control the function of society and order and culture in such a way where you respond to stimuli as right or wrong mm -hmm. based on what they tell you. You know, mm -hmm. so I think like that journey through history is important context to say, if I feel a certain way about my personal decision to engage with cannabis mm -hmm. or not, at least I'm informed. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, and so the other things to think through, though, like this has not been like a easy journey and mm -hmm. I've had to really labor through it. I didn't get it right the whole way yeah. through because I'm st I'm doing life with someone else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Who. My body is not my own. My wife yeah. has joint say in. See? So there's been a journey of even like That's the even difference deeper. why I why I decided to vaporize versus smoke, you know, like first off to stay within legal bounds, right? If my yeah. wife going to rock with it and for it to be honorable before God, for me to really do this in faith, wow. I can't be illegal. So I went through the proper methods and the, and that's a whole nother side of it cuz you're talking about the medicinal purposes of it. Yeah. Like through the pandemic, getting into counseling was diagnosed with PTSD. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm a black dude from the streets, bro. You sharing HIPAA information right now, by the way, but that's cool. What that mean? That means it's confidential medical. What is? You're you said the diagnosis. Bro, because I know somebody let me tell you, bro. Like I used to, bro, in I, high school, look, I'm getting I'm getting shot at, bro. I'm just letting y'all know. And then going to school this. the next day. Y'all getting this and real. Acting like it's normal. Hey. Bro, like hey. 
Bro, the sexual experiences at early ages, bro. Hey. Like burying my mom, bro. Yes. And and just going to work. Yes. As medicine. Like yes. the traumas is there. Then yes. you watch I watched George Floyd die on the internet. Yes. Garner, Fernando, bro. It's yep. it insurmountable. So I'm I'm wrestling with why am I struggling emotionally attaching to people? Man, bro. Why is it so easy for me to just disconnect and like to get to the I think I think we put such an emphasis on the physical realm, mm-hmm. right? We'll take a pill and a quick if our physical body's in pain. But bro, there's so much stigma and around the mental space, we don't treat it the same. So here's yeah. a, here is a product that was helping my mind, mm-hmm. right? And I, I know for in the Christian space, like there's this, uh, there's this. Right, like being um, sober minded. I don't know what to call it. Colloquialism, right? That's like a was, mantra of being sober minded. Conviction. Conviction. Well, there's some, there's it's, scripture it's, that says it's being sober minded. Yeah, it's a yeah. conviction to be sober minded. Yeah. So, yes. It's, it, and you're I don't saying, know what you're trying to say. Well, no, no. Colloquialism, basically, you're saying it's a saying. You know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but I but yeah. I feel like the way it gets conveyed is this, this is a conviction. Like you know, be sober minded. So tying it mm-hmm. to what you're wrestling with, that's the pushback. Well, well yes, yeah, I, I know that yeah. that's a very real. It's altering your mind, yes. which. Wait, I don't want you to give this to them yet, bro. I just um, wait because because we're, we we're here. We're here yeah. in a good place of tension. Okay. We're in a good place of tension right now, and and I think you know as we're as we're moving through a conversation like this, I don't want it to be, um, I don't, I don't want it to be treated as if to your earlier point, this was an easy conclusion. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. 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 So I was talking about my wife. Yeah. 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 Go back. So that, cause there's, there's the whole, like Romans 14, you know, if you have faith, have it unto yourself. Mm -hmm. But if there's something you're doing that's causing your brother to stumble, like, bro, like out of love for your brother, chill. So most people would reference that in this context when my wife early on was like, no way. Yeah. But I had I just pushed back and asked these questions around, like, did God create this? Like, why do you feel this way about this? Like, where did you learn that? And and even though she like, and this it was a journey of respecting her boundary, right? And like, I she hates the smell. Mm-hmm. Okay. Out of love for you, I ain't just gonna be blowing down and come in like nigga, you just gonna accept me. Cause that ain't love. You know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. like, like we gonna find yeah. a way. Cause cause I had I had to, she had to be honest mm-hmm. when we talked about the benefit. Mm. When bro was on it coming mm-hmm. in and he super dad, bro, husband mm-hmm. game going through the roof, cause now bro can focus. Mm. Now the anxiety ain't got me all in my head. You know mm. what I'm saying? Stress spilling over on y'all. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? I have found the medicine that works and helps my mental traumas. Now, mm. I think also the problem that will come up is like the abuse of it, like because that is also a real thing. Well, yeah, and we'll and we'll get to that. But I but I think what you just said is an it's an important thing to to highlight is what I think the perception is of you know intake of of cannabis is going to affect productivity. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's going to affect how productive you are in your work environment in your church environment, in your family Mm -hmm. situation, like this drug is going to cripple you or Mm -hmm. handicap you in some way from being able to perform at a high level. Bro. And you saw a difference. Bro, because remember back, bro, I ain't going to say you remember, I ain't going to put it, I don't want to give you HIPAA info out, but (laughs) back in the day, like when you would buy some marijuana from somebody or cannabis, whatever they call it. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what that is. Gas. But, I need some gas. But at this stage, because again, like I'm sitting down with doctors and bud tenders and looking at chemical makeups, and there's just different segments of the strand that, you know, the impact is different. So you might have an indica that is more of a full body euphoria that's like which, but there's other ones Education. that are mental stimulants that unlock creativity, that Bro. stimulate focus. Listen, which I'm, again, if you don't have the experience of going and really knowing what you're selecting, you are at the mercy of whatever somebody give you. Listen, so listen, I got I have my Nas shirt on today. Um, this got my Rugrats. You, you got your Rugrats, but but here I'm gonna tie it in. I'm gonna tie it in. If you haven't already, you should watch uh, a documentary that he produced called Smoke: uh, Marijuana in Black America. That's the name of the documentary. You should watch it. Mm. It is going to basically take give some shape to what Terrell's talking about 
because it walks you through the history and the application in society today. And again, the, the encouragement is to be informed. You know, don't just allow stigma and propaganda to, propaganda to shape your perception of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Actually do the research yourself. This, this phone that we have is, is a gateway. This is the gateway for real, <laughs> like to so much information, so much available information that you have access to, to, to better equip you for having these kinds of conversations. Because the initial emotional response may not be from an, a place of being informed. Mm -hmm. It just may come from the psychological manipulation <laughs> that society has put you through. I want to go back to just the the basic notion of stigma and perception that has been associated with this drug because as, as you're watching a documentary like this, and there are others, you begin to see that there is a way drugs like this is positioned to only apply to certain communities in certain contexts, particularly poor communities, you know, particularly minority communities. And I want to tell everyone right now, like drug culture is not limited to those communities. You know, this is not a division of economic uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. you no, know, this is happening everywhere. Right. You know, when you go to a dispensary and I know you can speak to this, you know, like this is and I can speak to this because I was going to a dispensary to get to fill a prescription for my mother as she was suffering from cancer. So when you walk into a dispensary, it's, it's kind of a altering perception, altering experience because you're watching people from all walks of life come in those doors. It looks almost like a BMV. Like, you know, that's like almost Switzerland for everybody in society. Everybody got to go to the BMV or you can't be rolling out here. And yet there's a different kind of rolling that you got to participate in <laughs> depending on your professional field or your circumstance in life. And it was really interesting just to take that in and watch this kind of person walk in, this kind of mm -hmm. person walk in, somebody have on scrubs, somebody have on a business suit, somebody have on a hoodie, but everybody's in there for the purposes of addressing something that's going on in them. Mm -hmm. Medicinally, medicinally, mm -hmm. medicine. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But my main point is there's no economic division of, of engagement mm -hmm. with this. Like, you know, rich people engage with this. Poor people, middle class. Like, mm -hmm. this, is, this mm -hmm. is something that's commonly mm -hmm. explored. And it, and it can make you just look at the entire world differently. Yeah. I will say that the, I think that the gap is awareness and knowledge of the available resources to do it legally. Cause I will that's say true. like, that's true. Like Which, in order to get the license, like, you know, to get the diagnosis, I, I firmly believe every black person in America got some PTSD of some sort. It should be a part of reparations <laughs> in my opinion for us to that's automatically get the card. The card should just come in the mail. Like, right. Oh, what's your history? Here's the card, right. but on continue. Us. Yes. On us. <laughs> 12 months. On us. 1000. Because I want to make this point real quick about the way that, the botanist or an institution or a dispensary like that can even exist. It's because the conversation about the connect or the plug has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that this is playing out state to state, the people who are in charge of the decisions of legality and mm -hmm. accessibility mm -hmm. are, are the very same people who were demonizing it 50 years ago. But because they're on the cutting edge of the laws, like it's such a, one of my clients has a dispensary. It's such a high barrier of entry. You got to really have your P's and Q's. So even as things are readily becoming available, you have these individuals who are quick to buy in the land. So they get the real estate game. You know what I'm saying? They lease out the land to the growers. Then they open it. Like, so they quickly set up commerce before you can even get your card. <laughs> Bro, before you can even get the charges dropped. How about that? Another thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you may already have a clientele base. Bro, and you know, that's a, you can't even qualify for a medical car if you have a, med uh, a criminal history, right? So there's, again, all these hurdles. That's a whole nother derailing topic. But, it, but, it that, is, but this is the conversation. Yeah. Because for me, the, the motivation for exploring this kind of conversation is a question of justice. You know, like in the injustice of the way people are treated in association with this as we're changing the narrative yeah. 
for our, our world now and for our world in the future. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, the church is behind on mm-hmm. this. You know, mm-hmm. like this this kind of conversation has been rapidly expanding for mm-hmm. years now. Mm-hmm. You know, if if we really wanted to be on the cutting edge of the conversation, we should have been talking about this when it happened in Colorado. Mm-hmm. You know, because we were afraid, bro. Bro, we were we were we we are very slow to engage with the conversation. We like talk on on the layers outside of the conversation, mm-hmm. and and that's just like us trying to play it safe. But fam, Colorado was a precedent. Mm-hmm. You know, it that that's what we failed to see is like this wasn't just like oh yeah, this is what they do out there. No. This was a test market in order for some legislation mm-hmm. to take place in order for it to become widely accessible and acceptable. Mm-hmm. So if you see it that way, then you're you're analyzing a trend in society mm-hmm. that ultimately will bring the issue to your doorstep. Mm-hmm. And then you can't avoid it anymore. Mm-hmm. And then we're reactive. Yep. So right now we're, we're trying to say like 420 is a day that we can still reclaim Mm-hmm. For discipleship, for education, for um, relationship. Thank you, Pastor. Brandon. You know, like I'm just listen. I I, I know, know all I the a, language. I got a little off there. It, I was no, 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 no. I'm not, you're in there, bro. Like I just think that what the beauty of what you're doing right now is you're giving kind of a personal testimony of how you've walked through this for yourself. And I think that there are perceptions of the kind of person mm-hmm. who would walk through this mm-hmm. themselves that you're just eliminating right now. Because yeah. people may have a picture in their mind like, oh, yeah, you know, that person on the fringes has to go to the dispensary because, you know, clearly they, mm-hmm. clearly God's not working in their life, you mm-hmm. know, or God has to pray that away. Oh, Why you can, what you mean? Stress, and anxiety. You should be Come praying. On. Come on. And we and, and as a society, too, let me just let me just get my bars off real quick. As a society, we don't value the spiritual man. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't acknowledge and or spend time understanding our spiritual being Mm -hmm. here in this society. We're more scientific, uh, intellectual based society that thinks we we can solve every issue we have with academia Mm -hmm. instead of the the holistic approach, which takes into account mindfulness and soul Mm -hmm. care and and what kinds of stimuli stimuli around you affect how you're doing Mm -hmm. from day to day. Like people wake up just sad and depressed and lonely and heavy and don't know why. So they go and get a a book that may describe the circumstances, but offer no solutions. You go talk to a doctor who may prescribe something to you that doesn't necessarily make you more productive. It just makes you addicted, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, and that happens from children, Mm -hmm. you know, like you're messing up the classroom environment. You Mm -hmm. need medication. Mm -hmm. You need medication. We don't know what's going on at home. We don't know the trauma that you've seen even at a young age to be able to introduce you into a counseling environment and provide some alternative approaches to addressing the issues you have. All we know is that behavior has to stop Mm -hmm. because the efficiency of schooling and the productivity of this educational environment takes precedent over Mm -hmm. what you're actually going through. Mm -hmm. And we're out of balance with that as a society. So it affects the perceptions that we have when we engage with subjects like these. Mm -hmm. So with, 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 Give it up for Taylor Gray, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, nah, bro, like the the applause is shared, man. You're opening the door. You're opening the door. Like you, you at your age, you're, you're, you're establishing a precedent relationally, publicly, like in your family. Like if y'all are married and you're not having conversations like these, you know, like the the conversations Mm -hmm. of boundaries and mutual acceptance and -hmm. and exposing layers of who you are to one another and Mm -hmm. trying to to come to an agreement and peaceful solution in terms of how to walk better together and understanding. Look, that that marriage is is really on the hot seat (laughs) if you're not exploring that to that degree. So I just want to commend you and your wife for being able to work through that in a healthy way. And I want to, I mean, I guess, can I ask this? Was was the pandemic sort of a linchpin for some of this for you? Uh, honestly, it was a bit before the pandemic. Okay. Like, um, you know, I... Th- I launched the sal- I launched a salon in 2018 at the top of the year, mm-hmm. and by like 
late 2019, right before the pandemic, dude, I was working seven days a week, mm. 16 hour days, mm. burning the candle at both ends. You know what I'm saying? So my introduction to like, bro, I need to relieve some. And, and because our relationship was a little, you know, she felt like a single mom because I'm working this much. So, you know, my little situation in the sheets was a little turbulent. So I needed my release. And so that was the tension point. We went, I ain't even going to expose that trip. <laughs> <laughs> but then the pandemic happened. <laughs> Blame it on it. Listen. Well, the pan- it was all right in that three to six month. Yeah. yeah. Top end of 2019, top of 2020. Because again, mm-hmm. like instinctually, like that, that was literally the hardest season of my life, bro. Mm. Where even all of those traumas, like I said, bro, I buried my mom on a Saturday and was back at school and work on the Monday, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I so remember, I remember that, bro. Not dealing with it, like the it it all came into came yeah. into a halt there. So yeah, bro. All the anxiety, all the depression, <laughs> and and now the world shuts down, so I don't have work as medicine. Yeah, you don't have an outlet. Work was the thing helping me cope. So yeah. What you were when you get off the drug, there's still the withdrawal, mm-hmm. and what you were taking the medicine for is still there. Bro. So that's where it was one of them like, babe, we need to have a conversation around this. Primarily, look at these benefits. Do you see the the impact that it's having on your husband? Mm-hmm. Can we be honest about that? No matter how you feel about the context, its origin, comparing 2019 TC to mid-2020, what does that look and feel like? Mm. Which one would you rather have? Which one is more supportive? Which one do you feel like is a better team player for you? Mm. And when you have to, like, because if it wouldn't impact me, if I'm out here sluggish, if I'm not productive, if I'm talking to her greasy on it, like, she would have every right to be like, nah, we shutting this down. You get too loose, bro. Mm-hmm. But it was, it's, it was to the point to not be on it mm-hmm. was the liability. And so she had to wrestle with, do I want a husband that's on cannabis? She had to say that. like, mm-hmm. And that's where, again, we just had to dig into the stigma. Where, mm-hmm. at what point is that so, is that a bad thing? Are you okay with that? You look, like, Drug culture, bro, in our society is so, pre- we, we are a society of drug culture. You know, like the, the pharmaceutical inter- industry is booming. Billies, it's bro. always going to be, bro. Oh, trillies. Trillies. It's always going to be that because our society is a heavily medicated society. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that could stretch into, you know, kind of public relations campaigns, branding, you know, big companies, whatever, in, in, in other directions. But specifically with drugs, you know, there there's stigma associated with a number of different drugs, mm-hmm. you know. But to your earlier point, the way m- marijuana in term was placed in a category of danger, Mm -hmm. you know, in association with crime and murder and rape and robbery. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like this drug causes you to do this. That's the way we were told. And I would like, have you ever personally done it? And (laughs) did that cause you to do that? Fam, fam. Like, you know, again, we both have worked in corporate America and to engage with people who are at certain economic levels, you know, whether it be your boss or your peer who casually engage mm-hmm. in, with cannabis, mm-hmm. have been for years, mm-hmm. have friends, homies, whole social groups who who don't even talk about it. Like it's not mm-hmm. even like a, a thing to emphasize. It's mm-hmm. just something that you make sure you do privately, mm-hmm. you know, and don't have the smell. Mm-hmm. So there are ways to, to kind of mask the 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 outward perception you get but back to productivity you know your wife wrestled with a very real fear of how are you going to show up in your situations of responsibility Mm -hmm. how like was this going to affect the way you showed up and you had to have that conversation Mm -hmm. i think this is a great time to travel down the path of spiritual presence Mm -hmm. like how do you show up spiritually Mm -hmm. with with reference to cannabis Mm -hmm. because again as you said before the church deals with this Mm -hmm. a certain way the church looks at this as a spiritual demerit Mm -hmm. like you are lesser 
uh, developed spiritually or you are less mm-hmm. mature or the way that you depend on God is severely compromised mm-hmm. because you use cannabis. Mm-hmm. To that, what 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 has been your journey navigating that kind of pushback or that mm-hmm. perception? Uh, I think it first off, it starts in my home. I mm-hmm. ain't even really caring about it externally until like the way I showed up at home as a spiritual leader, mm. right? Like my wife, even leading up to this moment, like I don't have this long history of driving my wife into brick walls, not leading her well, just dragging her, not consulting her opinion, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Seasons where I could have did it better, mm-hmm. but as a leader, she trusts me off the strength, mm. you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I've earned that, you yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, and so when I come to the table, and she, you know, I'm a sacrificial lover, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I don't mind getting on the cross when mm-hmm. you don't deserve it. Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm a husband. I love my wife. It's mm-hmm. Christ's love the church, bro. Mm-hmm. And gave himself for her, bro. I get up there. But I think when she... Would you slap somebody in public for her? Hey, if, they if the situation her, calls for it. On the stage, in front of the church, if they disrespected her, would you walk up and slap the dude? I'm grateful. You don't have to answer that. For meekness. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful for meekness. <laughs> Having the absolute power to destroy, but to refrain. It takes Amen. it takes God, bro. Amen. Um, I just so, know you love your wife. I bro, just had to not I had, in front of me, fam. I just not had to address me, that energy real not quick. Not in front of me. Don't let these cameras why you why you forget the code, bro? Like my shorty bought you, bro. Not Let me in just front say I'm gonna dap you up right after, bro. I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, you know, but you know, but y'all pray for yeah. me because I, I know how much this man loves his wife. Bro, you put your hands on the hey. Yeah. I yeah, know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you in that vein, but you were saying like I don't you even remember. I know what you were saying. You were saying you serve your wife, you sacrifice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So again, I think from a when you talk about how do you show up spiritually, mm-hmm. right? My wife knows my spiritual journey. She mm. see the fast when it ain't publicized. Yeah. You know, she see me, I shut down a social media in a heartbeat. Yeah. She see the book reading. She see the praying. She see me laying hands on my kids and her. Like yeah. she, bro, she hear me prophesying over her life and it yeah. come in the past, bro. Yeah. So when I'm bringing up, it ain't like I'm bringing up some foolishness that you brought a clear scripture that said this is a no. Yeah. So again, and my wife is reasonable. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So she was open to the conversation, you know, mm-hmm. and and that's all you could really, especially from a partner, that's all I could ask for. Now, um, I'm in a season where, bro, I'm a college dropout, bro. Mm-hmm. So when I got them opportunities to build financial intelligence units, change the trajectory of my life, I didn't know that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. But in order to get it, I knew there was a role I had to play, an image I had to play. And even when I shifted into entrepreneurship and took ownership of my my situation, there still was this idea that I had to be and look like something other than I was. Mm. The reason yeah. I referenced that LinkedIn campaign is because this the, the hashtag is I am professional. Mm. They really pulling back the curtain on like, nah, you show up as your full self. That is professional. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And. And so what's professional wow. is I'm self-aware t- enough to know where my mental liabilities are. Mm-hmm. I'm courageous enough to seek uh, the, the support that I need. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed to have the financial resource to pay it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying, to be able to get something that actually helps me, bro, and not be afraid of what people think about me, bro. Yeah. I think yeah. most people are so afraid of how they're going to be perceived by this person. What my mama going to think? What my spouse going to think? Yeah. So they try to do it privately or they repress it. Mm-hmm. And and I think my wife loves me enough that we going to wrestle through it. Yeah. And but she's you know. but she's also evaluating how you show up. Yeah, and yeah, you just cool. described that those fears were alleviated like in real time like you were able to point to actual circumstances the the way things were playing out were right in front of mm-hmm. you yeah. so it could be measured. Yeah. You know to say is this taking away a part of my husband that I love? Mm-hmm. Is this taking away from our our kids having a present and active father? Mm-hmm. And the answers to those questions for you were, were no. Like mm-hmm. actually, it's it's better, you know, mm-hmm. than the alternative. I do got to be honest though, because this I think what did cause the struggle. So this is encouragement. Like if this is a conversation you feel like you need to have. Early on, I tried to shield her from it mm-hmm. versus be completely honest. Sure. Right. So I yeah. think 
but what that did was in her mind, I was trying to be mischievous around sure. it, which fueled this, you know, mm -hmm. trigger, if you will, yeah. around the topic. So I would just say, I'm just putting that out there. Like that's, if I could go back, I would have been more honest and direct, completely upfront. Yeah. But that's an exercise yeah. of trust. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of marriages that struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Like, being your full, whole, authentic self to your wife or your husband. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a beauty of the relationship that you have that a lot of folks are struggling with. Mm. Like, you know, they feel like they have to explore something privately because the trust isn't there to, to share that mm -hmm. with this other person you're living with mm -hmm. because they feel like they'll be met with judgment, with mm -hmm. uh, distance. Mm -hmm. When you're just really just trying to show another part of yourself that hopefully this other person will be willing to share with you as you commit to <laughs> till death do us part. Yeah. Because like as you're living in life, you have to be able to have that kind of a partnership. Mm -hmm. You have to have that ability to truly be one mm -hmm. in the way that you are are being transparent and, and ultimately being present. So mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's a dope thing to just say out the gate that, first of all, bro, it's natural to feel like you want to hide some stuff yeah, from yeah. your spouse. I was trying to think of where that came from. And I know we, me and my wife, we've been open about this because it went both ways. I think... Like what fuels that is if you when you hear how your significant other responds to other people that ain't you mm -hmm. like she'll she be surfing on oh, look at so and so I can't believe he and you sitting there doing it on the on the low. So you like, <laughs> oh, dang, I definitely can't. <laughs> I can't come out with this now. Yeah, man. So I, yes. bro, I could totally see that. I'm glad you pointed that out. It's But it's, it's, it's natural, man. And I and I'm just thankful to hear somebody uh, was able to explore that in a healthy way. And particularly as it relates to this topic, like mm -hmm. you're, you're opening a door. See, that's the thing is like it, it, some, it could be looked at as you're, you're introducing conflict, mm -hmm. but really what you're doing is opening a door to intimacy, mm -hmm. to be better understood, to, mm -hmm. to, to understand someone else better. Mm -hmm. And then you continue to walk together in agreement mm -hmm. with mutual respect. Yep. You brought up a word that I think is uber important, bro, that I actually think is uh, the Achilles heel to this conversation. Mm. I don't think people know how to do healthy conflict, bro, because like some conflict you do have to initiate. I think people are so afraid of it. They don't know how to really articulate their emotion well. They go from zero to 100. So they just steer from it, completely trying to keep peace. You know what I'm saying? But I think what also helped me and my wife through that was we got really good at doing conflict, you know, mm -hmm. and it hasn't been pretty. We've learned through like, oh, I punched you too hard with that one. You live with verbally, each other. Verbally, verbally, yeah. You, know, you live physically. it. You Let live me clarify. It. I ain't punched my wife ever. Oh, no. Nah. I mean. You know how they. But, yeah. but you know, there's there's still like physical ramifications to conflict, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just heaviness. Sometimes. I remember I didn't used to want to have conflict because I used to count like, man, if I go off on her tonight, I ain't going to have sex for like four days. So I'm going to just hold it. So, welcome, welcome nah. to the multitudes of, <laughs> of husbands. Like, you know, the phrase honest, happy man. wife, happy life that comes from that that place. Nah, bro. We're gonna get this on. I'll I go sexless for 30 minutes. We days ain't gonna we do gotta... this today because that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> about sex in marriage. Like, yeah, you know, right. what, what's the justice. exchange? What's the we, we'll, Part we'll, two. we'll give Make that sure to y'all at another time, but <laughs> cannabis is conflict enough. And you're you're right. Like conflict involves active engagement with one another, honest engagement. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't ignore or I can't downplay how I'm feeling. I have to bring it to the surface and test the relationship mm -hmm. with the actual issue. Whether or not right. we agree, mm -hmm. I have to at least let you know where I'm at, what I'm feeling, right. and then I'm I'm inviting you to do the same. Mm -hmm. So this was what was helpful. I'm gonna I'm help all y'all out. You see this bottle right quick, you know what I'm saying? So this is what, honestly, this is what our relationship had to look like. Because me and my wife, we mad opposites, bro. Mm. But so like this can represents the subject cannabis. Mm. And based on our pers like position towards it, mm -hmm. what I am seeing and describing about it 
is completely different than what you see and what you're describing. And as you're articulating, I think what, where people have trouble in conflict is like they are trying to prove mm. that what I see is correct and the only correct view of this mm. when really it's a like the, the power to be able to sit and hear somebody articulate a perspective you completely don't agree with, resonate with. I don't see that. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm trying to seek understanding, not mm -hmm. trying to prove I'm right. Right. And so just as it would be silly for me to try to tell you whatever you're describing here is wrong. Right. For us, it was just being honest about what we see about it. Yep. And invite people who can kind of bridge the gap for us. Like, oh, I see what T is saying. I see what that is saying. And, yep. Um, and, and so that helped us with our conflict. You know? I, I love it, bro. I love that. I mean, it, this is, this is obviously an application for you and your marriage, but I want to take it even further to see if this can become an application of the church, you know, in our relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. because, um, you yeah. know, I think people, whether it's intentionally or n unintentionally may live by this mantra that says love is the absence of conflict. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's one of the most unbiblical things that you could ever conclude about the concept of love. Facts. Because love is more so the, the endurance through conflict. You know, it's not, it's not the absence of it. It's like, how can you endure through these places where you may not necessarily see things the same way, mm -hmm. but you endure, you persevere, you overcome that place of lack of understanding to continue in relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's inevitable, you nice. know, unless you're just going to be dishonest or passive aggressive, you have to get to that place. And that literally shapes closeness and trust. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm, I've said for a long time, like, you know, I don't believe a relationship is real until it reaches conflict. You know, Facts. it's just not, mm -hmm. how do we live? And we always agree on everything. That's just mm -hmm. not reality. Yep. You know, we don't even agree with God on mm -hmm. everything. Right. You know, <laughs> so yeah. how do we per persevere? Somebody to, being scared. Fam, like it's, it's, it's like, nah, man, like, I got to get this on the table for us to deal with. And it's not guaranteed that we walk away from the table seeing it the same way. Mm -hmm. So when we get back to the church, we can explore this issue. There are going to be people who shut us off immediately. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, you know, they just on that weed. It's carnal. It's this, mm -hmm. this generation is headed towards the tankard. You know, mm -hmm. the devil has done this. And, you know, Satan has now influenced the, the minds of the new leaders and all of this different stuff. And what I believe we're doing is opening up the door to have a conversation that brings understanding. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it mm -hmm. will involve conflict. Mm -hmm. As it relates to this, it's a fact that you've got weed smokers in your church. Fact. Or vaporizers. Hey, or edible eaters. You, they're consuming cannabis. Correct. They are gassed up. They are fried. Whatever you want right. to say. Worshiping. Yeah, in worship. Leading worship and receiving the leading of the worship. It's happening. I think we, we have to, again, destroy the, the false perception, you know, deconstruct that and look at reality. You know, we're here. Mm -hmm. We're here. You know, there's a state to the west of us, Illinois, the entire state's legalized. There's a state to the north of us, Michigan, entire state is legalized. We are in a moment right now where marijuana as so-called cannabis is federally becoming decriminalized. Like it's at the last stage mm -hmm. of that becoming a fact of our society. You have members going to the botanist. You have members going to the street botanist. Mm -hmm. So let's just get some things clear. It's happening, whether they're going to tell you or not as a pastor or just maybe a very zealous brother or sister in Christ. That's up for discussion. Yeah. But we're here. Mm -hmm. We're here. And we have to be able to see one another in the capacity to where we're, we're trying to understand versus trying to establish our self-righteous pedestals mm -hmm. in association with the topic. Yeah. yeah. It's so ironic. Let me just confess to y'all. It's so ironic for me to be here right now saying this to you guys because I was the guy. Like, we, we could talk about our music history. Mm. Do you my know, dance, bro. Man, listen. Testimony of a weed addict. Dog, like, but, but think about what you said. Weed addict. Mm -hmm. I think that's still a testimony. Mm-hmm. 
because we're what we're we're not talking about right here is addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, I think just even the very calculated nature of application, we we should understand if we're going to talk about this biblically, we should know who the Holy Spirit is, what it means to be indwelt with the Holy Spirit, and what are the fruits of that. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self control. Facts. So addiction's not on the table. Bro, but hold on. So let's let's talk about this. Remember, we're talking about the stigma, right? Mm -hmm. The self control, the fear of this being a gateway drug, yes. bro. Fear. A lot of a lot of the pastors preaching that, bro, up on that stage, chunky, bro. They addicted <laughs> and abused the Oreos, bro. But because of the stick, what if it was stigma? So people going to jail for, <laughs> bro. The application of self control, bro. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's it's hurting your body. It's killing you. Oh, it's a gateway. Them Oreos is a gateway to the apple pie, bro. But that ain't the that ain't. Let me get off that. Let I me digress. just say. Let, let me just uh, amen that in in a more specific way. Um, many of our top visible leaders in the Christian church have vices. You know, they have vices that if we were able to share them publicly would not necessarily be well received that's fair um and and typically the bigger the influence the more um <laughs> the, the more unacceptable the vice yeah you know yep. and you're you're making a point about you know the way we control our eating habits and and, and different kinds of things that we should be paying attention to relative to our health um but back to the emotional health if you don't have like you're not accessing the the kinds of tools that you need to to pay attention to your mental and emotional health then you'll find yourself out here with several side chicks you yeah, know yeah. justifying it spiritually like mm -hmm. and and i and i know it sounds wild to say but there's a person that we should visit with in in light with this idea um when you think of someone like robbie zacharias global ministry globally influential and yet we find out the the scandalous nature of him visiting with his vices mm -hmm. his influence is it's all across the entire planet mm -hmm. and the vision we have of him is this super disciplined you know you know super holy super far off from any moral complications and yet you find him in a massage parlor somewhere, you know, doing something indecent. Well, shock waves go across the Christian world, but in order for that to, to remain a, a real application of your Christianity, in my opinion, you have to keep your Bible closed because you just quoted Proverbs. Hmm. You know, you, you just did a study on the book of Ecclesiastes where literally Solomon's confessing to you that he's experienced every pleasure known to man mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So that here is, here's a person regarded as the wisest person that ever lived. And he's canonized in scripture, giving wisdom and advice to us for our practical living. And yet his vices literally were governing his emotional state, bro. And his daddy, and it's fine. Let's just let's just go <laughs> go to go to Hebrews eleven if you want to find the roll call of the faith heroes who have checkered checkered pasts, mm -hmm. people who would be canceled in our society today. So this is not. Please, the the folks who want to jump to the extreme and listen to this and say, well, you're excusing sin or you're you're providing a gateway for for sin to be exalted. No, I'm introducing you to reality. We are human beings, mm -hmm. and we are wrestling with our nature, this, this fallen world and our sin nature. Mm -hmm. We need the Holy Spirit to govern our actions. And if we're going to be sober minded, it's not just about whether or not you take a drink of alcohol or whether you, you smoke or ingest cannabis in a particular way. It's about being aware of your environment mm -hmm. and the circumstances, being educated. Yeah, I would argue if you are full of anxiety and depression mentally, you are not sober minded. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So without Absolutely. A, so I think to your point, it is the the pursuing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Help me to have a clear mind. Help yes. me to purify this thing and renew it daily. Yes. I'm constantly unlearning. I'm constantly bringing the power washer across yep. thoughts and ideas that were presented to me that yep. 
I just kind of adopt it and then, you know, let's revisit that. You yes. Know? It takes a lot of courage though to do that publicly. Well, it's it's an application of spiritual maturity, dare I say, for you to land where you're at, you know, and to have the courage. Because here's the thing, it's not just about having the courage to talk about this in you know in a way that says, I don't care what other people think in and of itself. What it is is a security from God. You have mm-hmm. peace before God, which affects how you view other people's perceptions. That is a fact. You know, like you you can, this identity that I have in the Lord, that I've worked this out, that I've seen the fruit in my life, now I'm, I'm postured in such a way where you can toss back an opinion in my direction, but I'm Gucci at the throne. The mediator is still in full effect. Like the advocate is advocating for me mm-hmm. as you're working it out. Right. You know, and, and please work it out. But what, 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 I, what I hope we have more of in our churches is a table, you know, to come to. We got to have a table to come to mm-hmm. to talk about this kind of stuff instead of a platform that just gives one way communication. Mm-hmm. You are wrong. Turn to your Bibles and turn to your neighbor and say you are wrong. <laughs> You know, and we are repeating even something that we may not have a, a intellectually like got a chance to think about. Like, I'm just turning into yeah. my neighbor saying it. Bro, but you know what? You know, I did the talk uh, about like the church and its relationship to the metaverse. Mm. And there's an interesting parallel that I noticed, like with the introduction of the, uh, the VR on deck uh, inspired by TC. If you want to connect. Um, yeah. Yo, the the introduction of the Internet in the early 90s, right? Think about the dynamics that happened in the church, right? That I don't even think the church is really aware of this. Like, when you used to come to church in the 80s, early 90s, you get yourself together. (laughs) I'm Gucci, I'm good. Um, Like, whatever that pastor got up there and said, Mm -hmm. you know, the conversation was controlled. There was no quick Google. You either had to consult with your mom and dad, uncles, neighbors. Yep. But that it was the word. That's what it yep. was. Yep. You introduced the internet, Google drop in 98, smartphone come less than a decade later. So now, just over the course of 10 to 15 years, the, the congregant is now empowered to cross-reference everything that's yes. being said in real time. Yes. So as yes. much as the church doesn't want to acknowledge it, you can't Bro. control the conversation. <sighs> Like, I can get as many opinions on what you just said as I want. So no longer can you present it in this lens of this is what I see, this is what it is. You have to present it in, the, in a way that teaches me how to think. Mm-hmm. You know, now, again, there's some, there's some things I'm pretty dogmatic about still. Sure. But, but I'm, I'm flexible to hear how other people came to the same subject. And if, if there's more to be seen about the, the breath of God, I'm, oh, I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? But you being right about your observation from your vantage point does not mean that I am wrong in mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. where I think we haven't seen conflict play out like that. We're used to a winner, a loser when mm-hmm. it comes to conflict. You're right, I'm wrong. But what, is it, what does it look like to be a church united Right. Through Jesus's blood, not yes. through common practice. You know yes. what I'm saying? We got so many different cultures. We I come from a different culture than some of the white brothers that I rock with now. Yeah. So even there where they come to the subject of marijuana and all like they don't even got the same. So I think I'm just personally getting to the space where I'm yeah. old enough to not care. Well, well, I, you know, as humans, I think, there, you know, a lot of us are just. <sighs> A, a lot of us are, we find comfort in someone just telling us what to do mm. or telling us what's right because mm. we don't have to think. The exercise oh, of yeah. thinking. Having your own mind. Oh, my gosh, bro. Like, that's exhausting, you know? Mm. So it's like, man, why? I don't want to have to figure this out. Give I just want you to just tell me what to do. Show and me how I can be honorable before God. Bro, oh, this is the list? But the church exists in that format in our country, in our society. You know, it, you can make an argument, it goes back to, you know, the institution of the Catholic Church in Europe and 
you know, the Pope had the word of God and the people didn't get a chance to even read it, let alone engage with it. It was like, listen, I'm opening up the scriptures from up here. This is not printed and accessible for y'all. You just going to have to trust me in these garments that I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. And the people just had to do it out of fear mm -hmm. because guess what? If you don't, then God is coming after you. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about manipulating people through fear. So we're, we, we fast forward to a conversation about marijuana there was, there was a, at the time of, I'll say like the 80s, the, the anti-drug campaigns of that time. Bear shirts. Man, listen, listen. That at that time, the office or the institution of the presidency was looked at as a, a platform that you didn't really have to question that much, mm -hmm. you know, or you didn't have the capacity to because the internet was not there. So whatever was said from the high office was just something that you had to, you know, right. figure out why they were right. You they know, on TV. they on TV, they must be they're, they're in power. Like it's, it is what it is. So it wasn't even necessarily president Reagan who introduced this whole idea. It was his wife. Mm. So how are you going to argue with first, the first lady of the United States as she walks through the inner cities during the crack epidemic, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then crack, and the in the in the impact of crack cocaine in poverty impoverished communities is literally lumped in with the activity of drugs like marijuana mm -hmm. <laughs> that that your great great grandmother don't even give me here we are here we are bro because propaganda is effective mm -hmm. you know and what we're experiencing now is is such a distrust for people in positions of power because of the access to information we have. So you're right. As pastors, we have to be thinking about how we present certain elements of the Christian faith to say, I'm talking to thinkers now. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to memers now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking to, to Googlers, bro, brand managers and content creators. I'm talking to those people mm -hmm. who don't just take stuff at face value they're going to manipulate the content for their own ends, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. <laughs> so it's a whole nother dynamic, which to me makes it, makes it so much more crucial to explore the table versus the pulpit. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have seen the pulpit already and we've seen the, the impact of the pulpit throughout generations in our society today, but we haven't seen enough of the table. Mm -hmm. So we're not sitting here trying to compete for the right answer on this thing. Like we're having a conversation mm -hmm. and I'm going to walk away from this and pastor my flock. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm inviting conflict and conversation at my local church just by being here, mm -hmm. but I'm down for it. Mm -hmm. I'm down for deconstruction, especially when it comes to deconstructing things that are false. Yeah. You, that were founded on a fight for power and greed and racism and control, bro. We got to revisit it, bro. We, we have gotta to revisit it. We have to. And Terrell and I are hip hop heads. So we know how this is. Be you know what's so funny to me, bro? Like, and it just came to my mind, like how a person like Snoop is like a national treasure. And <laughs> I mean, have you listened to Doggy Style? Like, I mean. <laughs> What, what really i don't know what it is bro he got the sauce bro i admire it i know what it is everybody's smoking weed that's 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 what i'm taking away right now is like you can't make some sort of agreement with snoop as a person of influence and visibility without negotiating with his lifestyle Cause he's not hiding it, bro. Mm -hmm. It's on deck. Like mm -hmm. the shock waves of him smoking before the Super Bowl performance was like, bro, y'all, this is dishonest. Right. Y'all know S Snoop smokes. Yeah. Come on, man. So let's be honest about the people that we raise up. Hip hop music is pop mm -hmm. music now. And we now have to have some honest conversations about our society because hip hop runs it right mm -hmm. now i'm not afraid to say it. we are running it right now yeah bro and we're hip-hop kids yeah. so we now have to approach the content of the music mm -hmm. in a different way because this we got sons coming so like you know the 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 black album up there right you know when you bring up hip-hop like 
for me, hip hop was like a father, bro, where I learned how to do and express, you know what I'm saying? Those were the muses, like, oh, like the measuring stick, if you will. I didn't have another reference point. Yeah. But so even things like sex, the use of drugs, right? You watch somebody like Jay, the maturation in his thought, you know, the this, the difference between the Black Album and 444 in perspective. <laughs> but the, I think the problem in, and the opportunity is some people still living off his Black Album mantras and didn't grow with them. So Jay done gave you them gems 20 years ago, 03, and you still, you 40 still big pimp. Jay done grew up. But there's some people we haven't. You know, well, well, haven't, well. But. I'm gonna just say this, and, and this is an oh, inside yeah, joke for the pe- for the people. Shout out to Seat Five. Um, oh my you know. gosh, bro! <laughs> Shout out to Campino. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Shane Huey. <laughs> Seat Five is one of the seat most epic five. laughter. No, the the most wholesome laugh that I have of Taylor <laughs> Gray is when no, we went. <laughs> no, this ain't the day for stories. This ain't the day. I'm just saying, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. I'm 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 just. I, <laughs> I'm saying that to uh, say we went to see the Jay Z 444 concert, yep. and to to illustrate your point, the people who were there, these were like. <laughs> Grown people who have been raised by Jay, bro. They out, bro. They nobody wouldn't have been able to say it, but they like, bro. I'm at my dad's concert, bro. They, you looking at how people looking at Jay, bro? In their thirty, late thirties, early forties, you know, bro, bro. And it's real, bro. And 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 that, but that kind of fathering, if you will, is 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 a cultural experience so this is a culture that had already been comfortable with the widespread application of smoking cannabis or ingesting cannabis it was already there Mm -hmm. you know and and some it's it's crazy to even think about you know andre 3000's verse on kanye's album you know life of the party Mm -hmm. he said in that verse is like i just started smoking again all those years y'all thought i was high you know, and so here's an application of of self control. Mm-hmm. Like you just you're looking at all these people, and you think that they're just just completely blown out of their mind. They're not in their right mind as they write mm-hmm. and think and and actually impact society. Nah, like they know where it's at, but they also know how to engage when they do. Jay mm-hmm. didn't smoke for years. Mm-hmm. He said that in his music. Mm-hmm. So again, the stigmas are here. There's stigmas associated with hip hop culture mm-hmm. that people are still wrestling with. Mm-hmm. What you said on uh, the the LinkedIn campaign, man, bro, there are people who generally in the professional space in their comfort zones, they show up in everyday life in jeans and a hoodie mm-hmm. in everyday life. But somehow, now that we saw Zuckerberg doing it, now it's more widely accessible. Now it's time for the campaign. Mm-hmm. I'm glad it's here. But w- do you really want to see what it looks like for people to authentically show up as themselves? Yeah, I mean, as dope as the campaign was, it's very compelling, but there aren't any corporate spaces that are available for what they talk about. It's a- ideal. Outside of Google and Facebook and some of those kind of tech environments yeah. that are, I think, just, you know, they're they're younger and... <laughs> Don't, all right, huh? I don't want to mess up my deal. Edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It's 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 one of those things where I think our society is evolving mm-hmm. in the way that we we perceive a conversation even like this. And and bro, to be honest, man, you know, I, here here's where I am in the conclusion of the matter. I would love for for us to be able to say like we're evolving in our perspectives because we're growing into more conscious uh human beings. Mm-hmm. But this is about money, bro. Like, there's a lot of money to be made oh, yeah. from this f- as an industry. Yep, and I won't be late. Bruh. <laughs> well, there's a lot of factors determining whether or not you can make money from this industry. As you said before, the political hoops that you got to jump through just to even have access to the land and the space and the licensing. Mm-hmm. Bro. The upfront fees and costs. Oh, it's real. Watch this Nas documentary, mm-hmm. Smoke. I'm definitely gonna watch that because because they're talk, there's politicians on there talking about it. Mm. You have to have a certain kind of political capital to 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 open up a dispensary. Mm. There was a group that tried to that, that tried to start 
a um a a dispensary presence here in Ohio that got shut down because they were looked at as a monopoly, like nobody else could compete. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was a group it included like Nick Lachey from 98 degrees, but that's that's a whole nother thing. But it was it was just like, wow, it's not as simple as Oh, it's it's a new game now, so everybody can jump in. No, mm-hmm. the the deck is stacked, the 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 doors are closed. It's invite only, and it's invite you know with several asterisks next mm-hmm. to your name. Yep. There are active politicians who are on the conservative side against this, who are now on the board for this, mm-hmm. and they're like, I mean, literally, you can watch clips side by side of them going hard in in, in their respective to get the seat. Oh, campaigning against it like our children are our moral condition our of our society is at risk and we cannot let this drug take over 5 years uh, I, I think there's a lot of new things that we can look at new opportunity america's new economy findings that have expanded our ability to understand bread money cheddar cash cream <laughs> <laughs> bruh that's what it is and and literally it is reshaping the perception the 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 way that the media treats this now mm-hmm. a lot more nuanced not just criminalization you're seeing documentaries like this show up in different capacities mm-hmm. so i think we are positioned well to help facilitate these conversations in our respective influence groups facts dude and and honestly, like to you brought up something that I think is huge, um, which this idea of our plight, generally speaking, right, coming from at least I know for me, a lot of my homies, like no father in the crib, right? Yes. The and so I, I admire, man, your family, bro. It, it means so much to me, man. Um, shout out Arthur Gray, man. Rest in Paradise, Leanne Gray. Um, the the idea that for most of us, bro, mm-hmm. we show up in life operating for approval instead of from it. Yes. When you don't have that affirmation from someone I revere an authority mm-hmm. that I know loves and trusts or that I have trust for, but I know will hold me accountable, right? But it's mm-hmm. all, without that, I, and the reason why I think it's relevant to this conversation, especially around cannabis, is like, um, for a lot of men who did not have that father at the crib, they found that level of affirmation at the church. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. Pastors calling you son and stuff like that, which I know Facts. the origin of it, but for some men, they receiving something different. That's that. Facts. Yes. The idea of exploring this conversation Man, is like I'm going against my father. I'm I'm so I dare not even go there, you know, because how is this going to impact my relationship there? Will I still be accepted? There's a lot on the line to even be watching this conversation this long. You know, how dare you be intrigued about this concept this long? I, I can feel that tension for for a lot of cats. And I think what helped me to get to that point is one, you mentioned it earlier, the the I know where I stand in the presence of God. I'm mm. approved, affirmed. I don't got to show up needing anything. Facts. But then also my relationships with key people in my life. I know I can't win everybody. I'm sure this might be the tipping point for some. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I don't want it to be that. But for me, I, I, I know that for a lot of people, exploring mm-hmm. this will require a level of fortitude that mm-hmm. there might be fallout. But the courage to even explore it is, for me, it came from I, I had to get a, approved first, you know. Bro, perfect love casts out fear. And when you experience perfect love, you're not afraid of the risks associated with it. And, and, I, and, and I think at the end of the day, like, hopefully you're hearing in our tone, like an invitation to a conversation you know, mm-hmm. like to better explore and the layers really <laughs> what 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 I feel like this this becomes is is a bridge to confession. You know, a lot of people who've been hiding for a grip, you know, like say, man, I feel the same way or I, I just haven't had mm-hmm. a space to to feel accepted mm-hmm. with this conclusion I've come to, you mm-hmm. know, and in the faith, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and I've met many of those folks 
who, who have impacted even the way that I'm perceiving this convicted me in, in the way that I, I have treated this in the past um, and, and give me, I think, the, an appropriate humility to seek understanding in the future about things that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, like that's godly fruit. You know, like to be more understanding, to to be slow to speak, quick to listen, to to have some humility about things you don't understand and life circumstances that are are still unfolding and evolving. Man, if that's the witness of the Christian church and the opposite of that is to just be dogmatic and shut down conversation and say it's sin. And, you know, listen, I want to be associated with the witness that actually gives people a multidimensional view of the love of God. Mm -hmm. Not just this one dimensional, one voice, uh, heavy handed approach to it. Mm -hmm. And there can be a very thoughtful response to this with equally studied out and, you know, informed perspective in caution of. Mm -hmm. But and I I'm, welcome it. yeah, I don't need to censor that, like mm -hmm. put it on the table and let's weigh it. Everybody's personal circumstance is different. There are people who have been addicted to cannabis who probably need to stay distant. Mm -hmm. from it because the association with their past life is is not healthy mm -hmm. and it's not going to get them into a healthy place to try to integrate mm -hmm. that with mm -hmm. God. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because what I am not giving a license for is, you know, because the whole go in and get your medical marijuana card and all this, like, I don't think marijuana is the end game. Sure. Like, it, it, it's like you don't just resolve I'm taking a leave for the rest of my life you you right. take it until you nurse back that physical liability back right. to strength so similarly I think cannabis usage at least for me at this stage has been synonymous with therapy work sure and really unpacking sure what, what's the root of the depression and anxiety and emotional detachment you know oh let's uh bet so so my bro let's let's land the plane let's land the plane here and i think again like it's 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 the uh it's an invitation rather than um a diatribe mm -hmm. you know like we we try to be open about where we are and how we're processing this and um this is going to dovetail into a lot of different conversations mm -hmm. so uh what are some i guess things that you hope people take away from our time together mm -hmm. Um, one that like TC Taylor Gray, we showed up very authentically today. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, there's no money behind this. There's mm -hmm. no influence that this conversation needs to have. This is two brothers who have been Facts. growing up in the faith together, who again, like have the courage enough to live in a fish tank, mm -hmm. you know, inviting people in it even because I don't owe it to anybody to discuss this. Facts. You know what yes. I'm saying? But I also know there's so many people bound yes. because it has to be done in secrecy yes. and or I just don't know about certain aspects. So I, so I think we showed up authentically. Everything that was said, I'm open to be wrong. If you fact check, I got some dates wrong. I said like it is a it. Uh, my second point that this is a conversation. Yes. It's a start of a conversation. If you Facts. feel a different way, I encourage you not to stop at up. Uh, I we clearly disagree. I'm gonna go my way. He goes he go, the different way. I invite the conversation because ultimately, if we all love Jesus, we're all trying to serve the local church. To be able to have a holistic perspective, I think empowers the body to be able to encounter anybody that comes Facts. into the church. Yes. And have a level, even if you don't agree with it, understand it, engage it, you know what I'm saying, still feel a way about it, to be able to sit and have conversation and develop empathy Yes, will allow you when someone comes in and uh, you don't feel the urgency, like we got to rush there and you hey, put that down, you know, because that could be the thing like that is actually sustaining, bro. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think those two things, we showed up authentically, we invite conversation. And, uh, you know, if you engage cannabis, enjoy 420. <laughs> hey, I, I don't have I just want to amen that like this is a conversation. I think I want to invite folks who do engage with this to, um, you know, either if you have our contact information, reach out to us directly. If you have feedback, if you have questions, if you have criticisms, like just directly reach out to us. Or, you know, if there is a comment section for you to engage with, please use it. Um this is the beginning 
of a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, so we're going to circle back to this. We anticipate there will be responses and we'd like to address the responses. Mm -hmm. You know, we like to talk about it and potentially in, in the future, you know, facilitate like a broader dialogue where we invite some other folks to, to speak live to, you know, what their experiences are and what they're thinking through and how they're processing it. I mean, listen, I'm a pastor. I put myself on the line. I would love for some other pastors to, to put themselves on the line, even if it's in opposition. But, you know, this, this whole notion that we can't have a peaceful exchange with some civility about a, a pretty taboo subject, we have to destroy that, you know, because to me, it, and, and I will say for a lot of other people, when we don't open those doors for that kind of conversation, it communicates fear to other mm -hmm. people. Like we're scared to, mm -hmm. you know, or we, you're being inauthentic. That's right. We're being inauthentic. We're hiding something. We don't, we don't really have the tools to answer the questions. I don't feel that way. Even to the point where I can raise my hand and say, I don't know. I'm not really sure about that. Mm -hmm. I'm still processing that. That's, that should be disarming because that's all of us right. to some degree. And the last thing I'll say as a takeaway is I am support. I am in support of legalization of cannabis. I am in a hundred percent support of that for a number of the reasons that we talked about here in, in, in our conversation, but I am a pastor that's in support of legalizing cannabis. I think there are so many issues in our society that can be addressed uh, in, in the category of justice by taking that step and it's more of an honest step and i know that it's complicated as it relates to power and money but in in the general application of how we are interacting with some of the choices that we have and some of the social circumstances that some of the family dynamics you know terrell mentioned earlier that there are families separated because of this law or the way that our society is treating this with a, a criminalized approach i think we should eliminate that barrier, rejoin families, revisit the institutions of economic opportunity and continue in the pursuit of an, an equality or, or an equitable engagement with possibility and um, holistic health, you know, and, and for the church, we need to be able to see one another as, as we truly are, you know, and, and before God, we need to expose who we truly are. And this, again, we don't eliminate the spiritual in order to have this conversation. Sober-mindedness and true acceptance and love from God gives us the gateway to, to talk about this in the way that we should. So look forward to hearing from y'all. And um, peace out.